Grace, mercy, and peace be unto each and every one of you. From God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. This is really cool. I like having people in the pews. Hello to all of you at home as well. Welcome to worship. And as we get started with the sermon, I have a question for you all. What now? What now is a question we've asked ourselves throughout our lives, our lives in a variety of different ways, whether it's something small like, I just finished my pizza and I'm still hungry, what now? Or maybe it's, I finished that TV show for the fifth time and what now? Or maybe I have finally crossed everything off my list by 10 a.m. today and don't know what else to do with my day. What now? Or maybe it's something more serious than that. I'm graduating from eighth grade this year. What now? Graduating from high school, what now? Graduating from college, what now? Maybe I'm about to get married, what now? About to have my first child, what now? Or I have worked at my career for 45 years and I am retiring. What now? Or for the disciples' case on this Ascension Day, they're probably asking to themselves, what now, Jesus? You are going up into heaven, what now? Or even as we are beginning this process of starting to open back up, we may ask ourselves, what now? Brief side note, I'm so thankful, so thankful to see people in the pews. But it is going to be a process. It's going to take some time. Um, Those of you at home, if you're not comfortable coming here to Emmanuel to worship yet, that is totally and 100% okay. It's going to take time. It's going to be a process, and we're going to trust the Lord in that process. Anyway, the disciples asked the question, what now? And Jesus, on that ascension day, gives a wonderful answer to that question, in my opinion. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 says these words, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria until the end of the earth. That is a great answer to the question of what now? Jesus says, go and be my witnesses. And that's a great answer to our questions of what now too. Graduating from high school, go and be Jesus' witness. Continue to be witnesses of Jesus. Or retiring from your job, continue to be witnesses of Jesus. Or starting to figure out this opening back up process. Continue to be witnesses of Jesus in your everyday lives in creative and new ways. What now? Be witnesses of Jesus. And so that's what we're going to be discussing and looking at this afternoon, this morning, whenever you're watching this. We're going to be looking at that wonderful command from our Lord Jesus to be witnesses across the world. We pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to gather once again via internet and also in person. Open our hearts and minds to what you have to say to us today. Help us to remember to trust in you and the power that you give us in the Holy Spirit to be your witnesses. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What now? Be witnesses of Jesus. How do we be witnesses of Jesus? Well, the answer to that question is in the Bible also. There is so much in here of the disciples, Apostle Paul, and so many other people being witnesses of Jesus in amazing ways. Holy Spirit worked through them to perform miracles, to be witnesses in that way or um, the Holy Spirit works in them to preach the good news and to be witnesses of Jesus in that way. But it really boils down to two simple things. The apostles, the apostle Paul, and all of these people are being witnesses of Jesus by being like Jesus and telling people about Jesus. 
And that's how we can be witnesses to Jesus today, too. God gives us so many different opportunities to be witnesses of Jesus in our daily lives, to be like Jesus in our daily lives. So how do we be like Jesus? There's a phrase, actually an acronym, from a few years back. I'm sure you have heard it before, maybe even wore a bracelet with this acronym on it at one point. WWJD, what would Jesus do? Asking ourselves that question, I think, is a wonderful way to start to be like Jesus, but we have to answer that question too. And I think a great answer to that question, really in every situation, is another acronym, H-W-L-F. He would love first. That's, I have a bracelet that has that on it, actually. Um, and so what does it mean to love first? There are all sorts of different ways that we can love others around us during this time. Maybe it's sending a letter to family members and friends that you know aren't going to be getting out anytime soon or are, are staying home because they're an at-risk population, whatever it might be, sending them an encouraging letter. Our eighth graders actually just had an opportunity to do that for their fourth quarter service project, to send letters to people. And from what I gather, the opportunity to do that was a blessing for these students and for those who received the letters. Or maybe it's just sending a quick text to a friend that might need a brief encouraging note with a scripture passage. There are so many different ways that we can love first, that we can be like Jesus during this time, and I encourage you to be creative and uh, think outside the box to find ways in which you can do that, to be like Jesus. All right, so we be like Jesus, and let me just simply tell people about how Jesus has worked in our lives. Ask yourselves the question, how do I see Jesus at work in my life? How have I seen Jesus at work in my life? Answer that question and then, then share the answer with everyone you interact with each and every day. Pastor Schmieding actually gave a wonderful example of that happening. He talked about the fact that enrollment or pre-enrollment numbers for Emmanuel Lutheran School are up which is absolutely amazing in the face of this pandemic. There's a variety of different ways that that could have come about, but it most certainly, at least a few of them, probably many of those new enrollments were because they knew people who are families here at Emmanuel already. That's right, Jesus worked through Emmanuel Lutheran schools and the lives of our families in amazing ways, and they recognized that and then shared it with their neighbor and anyone else who may be looking for a school. Be witnesses by being like Jesus and telling people about Jesus. Now, maybe you're thinking, that's cool, but there are so many times that I have had the opportunity to talk about Jesus or to be like Jesus, and I just, I didn't want to do it. I walked away, or I was scared or nervous, or it was uncomfortable, whatever that might be. And you're right, we all have those, those times, those experiences. We all feel like we're not good enough at it, and we're, we're not good enough at it. But that's why the good news of Jesus is so important. The fact that he came to this earth, died, rose again for us, eliminating all of our failures, and then giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit, which works in our hearts to shape and mold us to be like Jesus, to shape and mold us to have the power, have the confidence to once again recognize those opportunities and share Christ's love with people. Be his witnesses. We are called to be witnesses of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit which works in our hearts and minds to shape and mold us to be like Jesus. The same Holy Spirit which works in us to give us faith, to save us. The same Holy Spirit which gives us the power and abilities and qualities in our daily lives to be witnesses of Jesus. The same Holy Spirit which came to the disciples on Pentecost. We'll be celebrating that last week or next week like Pastor Ryan said. 
Same Holy Spirit that did that. And on that day of Pentecost, gave the disciples the ability to share Christ's message across language barriers. And 3,000 souls came to trust in Jesus as their Savior. And that same Holy Spirit, which we receive into our hearts in the waters of holy baptism, saved us and is working in us daily to be more like Jesus, to share Christ's love, to be his witnesses. This Holy Spirit works in amazing ways for the disciples, and it works in amazing ways through us today, too. I had a professor at Concordia University, Wisconsin, Reverend Dr. Tom Firetalk. Absolutely wonderful professor, and he told a story in one of his classes about his first call as a pastor. His first call was to the Philippines as a missionary. Now, Dr. Firetalk was also very honest about the fact that he really struggled with the language work that he had to do in seminary and college. At that time, he probably had to learn Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and German. And he said he was passable at best. But then when it came time to learn Filipino in order to go over to the Philippines, it came really quickly. And a, a lot faster than he expected, almost at unhuman speeds. That was the Holy Spirit at work in Dr. Firetog to get him ready to go over to the Philippines to be a missionary and to be a witness of Jesus Christ there. The Holy Spirit also works in our lives just in our various different vocations, our various different skills and talents. Maybe you're a doctor or a nurse. The Holy Spirit works in the caring, healing touch that you have. Maybe you're a grocery store worker. The Holy Spirit can work as you smile with customers as you help them find their groceries. Or maybe you are a worker at the post office. The Holy Spirit works in you as you deliver those blessings of letters and packages with a smile and care. Whatever you might be, whatever your talents, skills might be, the Holy Spirit can and does work in and through them to make you be witnesses of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the good news of how he has worked in your lives. The disciples were transformed. They witnessed the resurrection of Jesus and then the ascension and then received the power of the Holy Spirit and were transformed completely. And we are transformed by these same events too. Transformed from unworthy, not good enough people to worthy children of God that have the Holy Spirit working in our hearts to bring us to share Jesus and be his witnesses. We are called to be witnesses of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit until he returns or calls us home. We do not know the time, hour, circumstances of when this will happen, we don't know when Jesus will call us home, or we don't know when, and we don't know when Jesus will come back. But we do know that how we do know the way that Jesus will return. He will return in the similar way that he left, out of the sky and coming in victory, glory, with the wonderful, perfect new heavens and new earth for us to dwell with him forever. We do know that he will return that way. And that excitement will be on such an amazing level. Similar to, but even greater than the excitement that we will have in the fall when hopefully we're back to in-school, in-person school. Or the excitement level that we're experiencing right now as we have people in the sanctuaries. We're beginning that process. I recently saw a video on Facebook of a man just... uh, bursting with excitement, running up and down, jumping up and down, down a middle aisle of a church or some other building with an aisle. And the caption was, pastors, once they have in-person services again. And it's true. All of us are so very excited to see people in the pews again. However, we know and understand that it's a process. And so as those of you who are watching online and start to come back, we will continue to be excited. And that excitement will build until, Lord willing, we're back to five services a weekend with full sanctuary and fellowship hall. But again, we totally understand that it's a process. 
It'll take time, so we're going to continue to offer online worship, continue to offer drive-in worship at least for a little bit, and slowly be figuring out a plan to have more and more people worship with us in person as well. The excitement is high because God is blessing all of this. And as we navigate all these waters, most importantly, we're going to trust in the Holy Spirit to guide us to make the right decisions to glorify him. All right. We are celebrating a wonderful day today. Ascension Day. Ascension when our Lord and Savior Jesus rose up into the clouds to take his seat in heaven next to God the Father. Just like, just like the Apostle Creed tells us. It says these words, He, that is Jesus, ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. However, Jesus also promises to be with us until the end of the age. And he does that through the power of the Holy Spirit, which is in our hearts and with us, working in us to be witnesses of Jesus in our daily lives. And so I encourage you to be witnesses by the power of the Holy Spirit until Jesus returns. Be like Jesus. Love first. Ask yourselves the question of how is Jesus working in my life, my life and then share that with anyone who will listen. And be witnesses of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit till the end of time. Amen.